What's up guys? I have just gotten back from seeing Captain America Civil War for my second time and so I've decided to do a review of it. I decided to do it after two times because I did the same thing with Batman vs Superman and it worked out in my favor. That being said, let's jump right into it. So first off, I'm start with the story. We know the story uh, after the events of the Avengers, Avengers 2, and the different other movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe the governments across the world have decided that the Avengers need to be held accountable for their actions. And so they decide to enact the Sokovia Accords, which means that the Avengers need to sign the Accords and be beholden to the uh, United Nations. Now, this is not well received by Captain America and his team, and Iron Man uh, and his team are all for it. And this, of course, causes friction, among other things, and leads to the falling out that we're watching on the screen. So now that I've talked about the story, I'm going to jump into the good things that I liked about this movie, and then I'm going to break the movie down into different sections. So the good things that I liked about this movie ultimately were Black Panther and Spider-Man, who, without them, this movie would lack a lot of really cool moments. Uh, unfortunately, this movie has, uh, it suffers from the trailers and the TV spots that it put out because in those trailers and TV spots, it revealed the majority of the cool scenes. That, don't get me wrong, there still are some cool scenes to be seen in the movie. It's just not enough to combat having seen majority or a good part of the fight uh, between Captain America, uh, Iron Man, and Bucky. Uh, it doesn't make up for being ruined by uh, the trailer uh, when you see the airport scene. These things happen. Um, I wish they hadn't given away, you know, pretty much your first instance of meeting Black Panther as, you know, Black Panther, not meeting him as T'Challa. Unfortunately, they took that moment. Um, they took the first moment of seeing uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man in the Spider-Man costume. They took those moments away and unfortunately it is what it is that being said there are some cool moments that I can't really give away in this without spoiling it so I'm gonna save that for later that being said again the best parts to me were Black Panther and Spider-Man and yeah that was really it now the reason I feel that way and I'm gonna save that for very last when I talk about the acting the action the fight scenes how are the fight scenes well it's a Marvel movie so there's gonna be a lot of fight scenes uh, it was almost a fight scene every 10 minutes felt like to me maybe I'm wrong but it definitely felt like something action was happening constantly and it detracted from the story a little bit but not enough to really uh, throw off the movie the action was good it was you know very well coordinated very well choreographed and the way the teams worked together was very well, except for Iron Man's team, but that has to do with the fact that they were um, kind of a thrown together team that hadn't really worked together, whereas Captain America's team had worked together quite a bit, and so they were able to work together, maneuver together, and uh, plan out how they would attack, uh, except for Ant-Man, who would be the wild card in that scenario, whereas uh, Iron Man... War Machine, Vision, Black Panther, and Black Widow. Most of them have not really worked together yet, so they don't really know, and Spider-Man, excuse me, they don't really know how to really work as a team and how to uh, do moves together, whereas Cap's team does. Um, there are some problems with the action sequences. The first one that comes to mind is the one at the beginning of the movie with Crossbones and Captain America. Now, this fight sequence, it's a good fight sequence, but they're using a shaky cam, and that shaky cam, I kid you not, made me sick when I'm watching this movie. Uh, it was way too shaky, and I just had to look away because it was really upsetting my stomach and making me nauseous. Uh, and that feeling didn't really go away because they kept it, they kept the shaky cam, and I a lot of different scenes and there are some moments where you wanted the camera to be still because maybe it was a, a very important scene or it was kind of uh, a heavy scene 
and it would be like in between a fight sequence and the camera is shaking and it's just like please stop shaking i, I want to be able to see this person's face without the camera shaking that being said if you like the action sequences then good for you i just didn't like them because of the shaky cam and how fast paced they were moving like i get it action it goes fast it goes quick but it was way too quick it felt like as though i was watching this movie on fast forward in the action sequences next up editing now i'm gonna preface it like this and i know this is gonna drive some people crazy batman versus superman got a lot of shit for their editing and i get it it did have some problems with the editing and that was one of its flaws but when watching this movie it had the same flaws uh captain america civil war definitely had the same flaws as of batman versus superman in terms of editing uh, it would it was very choppy and it would go off to something else and then go back to what it was at before or it go to a new place and, or it would go to a new part of the story and it felt like there wasn't really a transition to that um, and I, I can't really without spoiling anything the way it moved from maybe a flashback to being in Vienna was just not very seamless or uh explained very well it was just kind of boom you're here boom you're here boom you're there uh boom this is what this person is doing and it was the same in batman versus superman and you know if you had a problem with it there you should have a problem with it here because it's still the same thing it's just marvel <sighs> maybe had some nicer transition effects um that being said Another problem with the editing was when they would cut to a new scene, they put up on the screen in big bold letters uh, where they were now at or what time period they were at. And that for me was very frustrating because it threw me out of the movie. Now in Winter Soldier, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a minute since I've seen it, they would put it like down here and just keep on going about their day. I don't know why they decided to take it from down here to boom, being right here in between literally covering up this much of the screen that was annoying and it just drove me completely out of the movie from having to one go from looking at something like a a nice scene and then now i'm looking at big white letters telling me now where they're at or what time period they're in the acting in this movie it was about what you'd expect from a marvel movie there was no real new um layer added to the acting from the actors. Everything we've seen um, before, it, it's in this movie. Um, the acting was par for the course. Now there are some good parts with the acting and ultimately, again, that goes back to what my favorite things about this movie were. And that was Chadwick Boseman and Tom Holland. Now you can, we can complain about Tom Holland's voice, you know, whatever, but we have to be mindful that he's playing the true essence of Spider-Man, who is a pre, well, he's who's in high school, and maybe has some voice problems. Maybe his voice is cracking a little bit. So it worked for me, and it felt very much like Spider-Man up on the big screen, which was a problem with uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Anyway, Chadwick Boseman and Tom Holland were the best parts of this movie in terms of acting, and I think mainly that has to do with the fact that they were new. Um, everybody else. It's the same performance we've seen before. There was nothing really new besides anger, um, which can be set for the movie as a whole. There was nothing really new to this movie besides elements of the story and the anger part of the story. And it was really disappointing to see because I think these actors can do better. We've seen you know, Chris Evans do good movies where he can actually pull off you know, a a movie we've seen Scarlett Johansson do a good movie and we've seen Robert Downey Jr. do good movies and we've seen what he can do with Iron Man but it seems like in this movie and quite frankly a lot recently in the Marvel movies that the acting has just stayed stagnant and they really haven't developed the characters more uh, Robert Downey Jr. if I was going to say any of them did better at acting than they previously have in their roles, I would say it's Robert Downey Jr. who 
pulled off being extremely pissed off. Um, I, I think ultimately, you know, without his acting, you know, if it was just if you if it was just the other people without Robert Downey Jr., um, without Chadwick Boseman, and without Tom Holland, the movie would feel stale acting wise because everybody else was just par for the course essentially with their acting. So now I'm going to bring it back to the story. I talked about the story before as what the story is or what it's about. But this time I'm going to talk about the elements of the story that either I liked or didn't like. And there's quite a bit that I didn't like or was disappointed with. Uh, Daniel Brule, I guess is how you say his name. I may be wrong. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm not good with foreign names. Uh, but he was very underused. I mean, this man is a great actor who's been in some really good movies. Rush uh, specifically was a really good one that he was in with uh, Chris Hemsworth that I really liked. And to see him in this movie, it was just like, dude, they completely underused you. That's, it's sad how bad, how little they actually used him. And I, I think that goes to a problem that Marvel has had since the beginning when they started this is that their villains are weak. They don't take the time to develop their, their villains and really flesh them out. So when you first meet him, you can literally sum up uh, Zemo, who is who Daniel plays, you can literally sum up who Zemo is by December 16th, mission report, December 16th, 1991. That's what you can sum him up as, not anything else because there's nothing really there until towards the end of the movie when you find out his motivation and it's like, well, I could have used that before. You know, I could have had a connection to this villain that I don't necessarily have. And I think that goes to the problem that the movie has is that they're trying to tell a bunch of different stories and introduce a bunch of new people. And because of that, the villain got sidelined and the villain, I could care less what happened to the villain. The villain could, they could have literally taken the villain out and I would have been like, same movie. In terms of the story, it felt forced to me. Uh, the, the tension felt extremely forced and like they were really trying to drive into your brain that, you know, it's tense. This is a tense movie. Stuff's going down. Be, be tense because this is a tense situation. Everybody's stressed out. Everybody's at each other's throat. But realistically, it wasn't like that for me. Everything that these characters were feeling was laid out on the table for you to see and just pick apart. And I don't like that. I like nuance. I like depth. And I like having to think about my movies. Um, and in, you don't have to do a lot of thinking in this movie. It's, it's all there. It's all out in the open for you, uh, which is, you know, something that I've had a problem with in, when it comes to Marvel movies. Uh, I wish this movie wasn't as funny as it was, uh, for such a serious tone to this movie, the, the jokes, the one-liners really throw you out of that seriousness of the story that it's trying to tell and the message that it's trying to send out and it dilutes that message extremely and I think the forced tension also dilutes that message there was a better way that they could have made the situation feel tense that they just didn't or wasn't willing to really explore I think they really just touched the surface of what they could have done with this movie and that's upsetting to me uh, because I like it when uh, writers aren't afraid to go there with it and really, you know, tell a story and send to home a message um, without having to, you know, force feed it or, you know, shove it all in your face. There, something can be said for the lack of depth to this movie. Black Panther on the big screen. I know Black Panther is a badass. I know he could if he wanted to, he could take out Captain America. He could take out pretty much the whole Avengers team if given the chance, you know, with the exception of Hulk, of course, and Thor. Um, but in this movie, I don't feel like they did him right. Um, I don't feel like they really showcased what Black Panther could do. They showed his agility. They showed uh, his strength. They showed that his suit is made out of vibranium. They showed that. But 
and that may be a spoiler, but if you know Marvel Comics, then that's not a spoiler, so whatever. Um, but they really play down how strong he actually is. And the same can be said for Vision, who is an immensely powerful uh, being in Marvel Universe that they just completely watered down and made him weak. Uh, it was... So many people on Captain America's team could have been taken out with one move by Vision, and they just didn't do it. Uh, they did not want to make Vision as powerful as he could be. On the other hand, you have Scarlet Witch, who they allowed to be extremely powerful and just walk around stop, stopping people. And it was just kind of like, are you, are you serious right now? Vision and Scarlet Witch should be the ones who are just like, they should be going at it and really just messing each other up. And Vision should be taking out people left and right. Yet they underused him and did not showcase his true ability and his true strength. They underused Black Panther and did not show uh, his strength and his ability uh, the way they could have. And it, it was really... Um, upsetting because they could have really had something there with Black Panther and really hyped him up with this movie but because they downplayed his actual strength what's the point like if he's not able to take out Captain America then what what are we even watching him for and we know but as a comic book person I know that he's strong enough to take out Captain America I know he's strong enough to take out most of the team if given the opportunity if he really wanted to you know, I've seen it before in comic books, and I've also seen it before on in the cartoons. So it's like, they really just, I don't know what it is about Marvel and why they play, downplay their, their strong characters. I like Hulk, like Vision and Black Panther in this case. They really downplay their, their power and their strength. And it's really disappointing to see because these characters are badass characters in the comic books and really can do a lot of damage um but that's just my opinion and i don't know if you guys feel the same way or not but that's what i thought and lastly guys and i'm gonna close it out here ultimately this movie is it, it, it it's fun it has its moments and it has a lot of cool scenes in it just be mindful that a lot of them were in the trailers uh, the acting uh is about what you expect from a marvel movie and if you go in expecting to have a you know the character the actors to go beyond what we've seen don't because it's it's just another marvel movie uh, if you're expecting a better story or a darker tone um don't because the tone is pretty much the same as it was from winter soldier which was a good movie it had its flaws like most movies do but this movie it is a sequel to winter soldier and it definitely uh, shows that and it definitely has its flaws a little bit more flaws than once our soldier actually had um, I know I'm gonna be in the minority on this video and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments below and that's fine I can take the heat um, that's why I do what I do if I couldn't take the heat I wouldn't do what I do but ultimately guys this movie gets to see and like I said I've seen this movie twice now and originally I did a review for it and I was like okay maybe I'm being too hard on this movie and after seeing it the second time, I actually lowered the score that I gave it before. I gave it a C plus. And after seeing it this time, I gave it a C. That's what I thought, guys. If you've seen the movie, let me know what you thought about the movie in the comments below. Tell me I'm wrong. We can have a nice little discussion about it. Um, and definitely check out our other videos. We did some other videos where we talked about Batman vs. Superman, and we have some other videos where we talked about Marvel movies as a whole, the problems that we've had with them, why we like them, and we also did a TV spot review for Civil War. And if you watch all those, you kind of get where I'm coming from. But that's it, guys. Peace out.